Welcome in Karudor. Now we are going to continue our vibration of stretched strings and to calculate the frequency, number of segments, tension force, mass per unit length, and length of a string. Let's start. First, what are the factors affecting on frequency of vibrating strings? First of all, number of segments. If the number of segments increases, so the frequency increases. So the relation between them is directly proportional between frequency nu and n, which is number of segments. This is the first factor which affects on the frequency. The second factor, which is the length of the string. The relation between the length of the string and the frequency is inversely proportional. So nu is inversely proportional with 1 over L. And the third factor, which is the tension force. And the relation between square root of tension force and the frequency is directly proportional. So nu is directly proportional with the square root Ft. Finally, the relation between the frequency and the mass per unit length is inversely proportional but under the root. So frequency nu is inversely proportional with the square root of m. m means mass per unit length. M means mass of one meter of the string. M means the mass per unit length or mass per unit longitudinal, longitudinal density. Okay, that's for these factors affecting on the frequency. We have four factors, number of segments, we have length of the string, we have the tension force, and we have mass per unit length or mass of one meter of the string. What's about if the fundamental tone, in the fundamental tone, its first harmonic tone. In the first harmonic tone, it consists of only one segment. So mu1 equals 1 over 2L times square root Ft over M. That's for the first harmonic tone. For the second harmonic tone or first over tone, first over tone or second harmonic tone, number of segments is 2. So mu equals 2 divided 2L times square root Ft over M. What's about the second overtone or third harmonic tone? Third harmonic tone means the number of segments equals 3. So, nu equals nu 3 equals 3 divided 2L times the square root Ft over M. Nu 3 equals 3 divided 2L times the square root Ft over M. That's for the third harmonic tone. What's about fourth harmonic tone or third overtone? Third overtone consists of, yes, four segments. So nu4, nu4 equals 4 divided 2L times the square root Ft over M. So the ratio between the frequencies will be 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. The frequency nu1 to nu2 to nu3 to nu4 will be as follows. 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. That's for the frequency. Okay, after that, when we talk about the velocity of the transverse waves in a string. Here, the ratio between the frequencies, as I told before, nu1 to nu2 to nu3 to nu4, is 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. What's about, what's about the wavelengths? What's about the wavelengths? The wavelength lambda1 to lambda2 to lambda3 to lambda4 is, is ratio, the ratios between them, 1 over 1 to 1 over 2 to 1 over 3, to 1 over 4. So, what are the factors affecting the fundamental frequency? We have the length, the length of the string, number 1, number 2, the tension, the tension of the string, number 3, the mass per unit length of the string. These are the main factors. So, if we have the relation between frequency and the length of the string, of course, frequency and the length of the string is inversely proportional. So the relation between the new one over new two equals, yes, L2 over L1. But the relation between frequency and tension force is directly, but under root. So new one over new two equals square root Ft1 over Ft2. Ft2. That's for the tension force. But for the mass per unit length, mass per unit length, it can, the, the relation between mass per unit length and the frequency is inversely proportional under root. So new one over nu2 equals the square root m2 over m1. 
M2 over M1. So we have these relations, it's very important. Mu1 over mu2 equals L2 over L1. Mu1 over mu2 equals square root FT1 over FT2. Finally, mu1 over mu2 equals square root M2 over M1 under roots. That's for these factors. What about the these relations, the ratio between two different frequencies? Here, mu1 over mu2 equals for the fundamental tone, so number of segments will cancel each other. But here, the length of strings, they are two different strings, so they have two different lengths. So L2 over L1, because the relation between the length of the string and the frequency is inversely proportional. Here, FT1 over FT2. Here, M2 over M1. But this mass per unit length, the mass per unit length can be calculated from three methods. We can calculate mass per unit length by, by what? Mass of the string, mass of the whole string, divided length of the whole string. If we say mass of the string equals uh, 0.005 and the length of the string is, yes, 1 meter. So the mass per unit length equals mass of the string 0.005 divided length of the string which is 1 meter. So it will be the same, 0.005 kilogram per meter. This is the first method to calculate, yes, to calculate the mass per unit length. Also, to calculate the mass per unit length, we can times, yes, we can multiply rho, rho means density, rho means density, density of the material of the string, times A, rho times A, or rho times pi r squared. If you have the A, which, is mean, which means a cross-sectional area, A, which means cross-sectional area, we can substitute A from, yes, this cross-section area of the string is, yes, it has this, this surface. So the area will be pi r squared. The area of the surface will be pi r squared. So here, when we substituted it, yes, mass per unit length equals rho times pi r squared. Rho, rho here, rho 2, the same, yes, rho 2 over rho 1. Pi cancel with pi and r2 squared after, uh, under the root, out of the root, will be R2 only. Also, R1 squared out of the root will be R1 only. So, this is the, this is the ratio between two different frequencies. Mu1 over mu2 equals L2 over L1 times R2 over R1 times square root FT1 times rho2. Rho2 means the density root of the density of the string, the material of the string, divided root of FT2 times rho 1. FT2 times rho 1. Of course, after that, we have very important questions about that. The first question, which is, frequency, frequency of fundamental tone, frequency of fundamental tone is lowest frequency produced by the string. Frequency of the fundamental tone is the lowest frequency. Why? Fundamental tone means, yes, we have only number of segments, only one segment. And the relation between the number of segments and the frequency is directly proportional. So as the number of frequency, as the number of segments decreases, so the frequency, yes, decreases. So in the fundamental tone, we have the least number of segments. So here, since the frequency of the string is directly proportional to the number of segments n, and in case of fundamental tone, n small equals 1, so the lowest frequency produced from the string, of course, in the fundamental tone. After that, another question, the vibrating string produces a tone, produces a tone, whose pitch increases with the tension. Why? Because the relation between the tension force and the frequency is directly proportional. So the frequency of the string is directly, <coughs> is directly proportional with the tension of the string. And so the frequency and the pitch will increase with each other. Finally, as the radius of the stretched string, as the radius of the stretched string decreases with constant tension, with constant tension, the pitch of the tone increases. Here, the relationship between the frequency and the radius is inversely proportional. So as the radius decreases, the frequency increases, and vice versa. At the end, I hope to understood our points for today. I hope also to join us in the next times. Thank you and goodbye.